On a night we've been hearing all about the psychology of winning, just look at this man's motivation. Lloyd Hunnigan, out for revenge and a world title against Jorge Vaca. Good evening, Lloyd Hunnigan lost his WBC World Welterweight title to Vaca in October. Last night at Wembley, he was aiming to become the first British boxer to regain a world title since Ted Kidd Lewis in 1917. The fight and the reaction coming up. Now, this is the home of another great motivator, Brian Clough. His Nottingham Forest side take on the club where Clough made his managerial reputation. We start with last night's fight at Wembley. Lloyd Hunnigan out to regain the WBC World Welterweight title. He lost to Jorge Vaca five months ago. Hunnigan had taken the title against Don Curry a year earlier, followed by three successful defences in which the man from Bermondsey had looked every inch a long-term champion. But against the Mexican Vaca, it was a very different Lloyd Hunnigan who let his title slip. And the better punches are coming for the Mexican now in this eighth round. The going gets tougher and tougher for the champion. And there's a crack of heads there. And the Mexican is cut above the right eye. Vaca judged to be ahead at the time the fight was stopped, and that defeat, the only blemish on Hunnigan's record, 27 years old and 20 of his 31 wins inside the distance, many substantially so. Vaca from Mexico, a year older, also with a reputation for stopping his opponents in quick time, five defeats and a draw in his 49 fights. Similarities then in the records, but contrasts in the way the two men build up for a big fight. Hunnigan, all disco music and adrenaline. His opponent, though, was being kept calm, warm and relaxed, pumped up only by the quiet confidence of those around him. He feels fine. Number one, here to stay, sir, here to stay. <laughs> now, when they met the first time, it was in the relatively subdued atmosphere of the Grand Hall at the Wembley Conference Centre. That was a help to Vaca. Last night, the boxers were making their way into the raucous atmosphere of the Wembley Arena, a noisy 8,000 crowd, definitely to Hunnigan's advantage. Continental Airlines, the fight sponsors. Tremendous reception for Hunnigan, the challenger. At ringside, Harry Carpenter. Lloyd Hunnigan, the challenger tonight, comes into the Wembley Arena ring to an almighty cheer from this packed crowd here. Some eight to 9,000 people packing Wembley Arena. And they're hoping it's going to be Hunnigan's night. looking Mexican, the champion Jorge Vaca returns to London for big money this time, which has tempted him back for his first defence of the title against the man from whom he took it in such controversial circumstances last year. And Hunnigan looks cool and confident, and his mental attitude to this fight is certainly a lot better than it was in October. It's a big night for Hunnigan, big test for him. He'll be 28 next month. Can he get this title back? And Vaca came over and made some sort of aggressive uh, move towards him. And Hunnigan, I won't say punched him off. So no anthems tonight, and the two come face to face. Although, we've already had that, with that little aggressive move by Vaca to Walt Hunnigan's corner. Twelve rounds for the WBC title. Will Hunnigan's hands stand up to him?
Joe Cortez from New Jersey, the referee, keeps them apart until the bell. Who's waiting for who? Their fight ended in the eighth round last time when there was an accidental clash of heads. And Backer was very, very badly cut indeed on his right eye. Will that eye stand up to what punishment it might get tonight? Will Hannigan's right hand stand up to what he hopes to do? The back has come in very, very aggressively. title fight almost as though the pair of them know that it won't go all the way Vaca looks strong he looks big Frank Hunnigan is the heavier man. But just a fraction. The Mexican's face already reddened. Hunnigan's left hook gets home high to the head. And Hunnigan looks a much sharper fighter tonight than he did in October when he was beset with domestic and personal problems. Hannigan looks much more like the man who put Gene Hatcher away in Marbella. He really does. And Vac is looking a little disturbed in these exchanges. And he's bleeding. Vacker is cut in the first round. His right eye went last time. And he's cut again. And he is very disturbed and it's near the right eye again. It's probably the same cut. He had more than 16 stitches put in it last time. And there's trouble there already, the blood running down the inside, down the inside of his, the side of his nose. Coming to the end of the first. And that wasn't done with a butt. The punch from Vacker. Back is almost weeping with frustration. He goes back to the corner. He feels the blood running down his face. And they go to work to try and staunch the fur of blood. The referee's in there having a look at it. So drama in the first three minutes. And they're going to have to do desperate work on that eye. Because if that is the old cut, he's got trouble because that old cut was a really terrible explosion of a cut that went in several directions. So Vaca's going to have to come out so early in the fight, trying to protect the cut. Well, it certainly wasn't done with a button. It's difficult to say which, which punch did it, but there were some furious exchanges in that first round. And about a minute from the end of the round, Vaca came out pawing at the eye. So Hunnigan literally draws first blood. And this is going to be an explosive fight. Head a bit there when he went in, Hunnigan. Just be careful. It was the accidental butt that causes 
downfall last time. The punch from Vaca. Who's going to be the first to drop? Furious exchanges. Vaca's eye beginning to bleed again. Putting Hunnigan under some pressure here. Remember, Hunnigan has got a bad right hand. He's got chips of bone floating around in the right hand. It hurts him when he hits with it. He might have to rely on the left hook. And the blood runs down the nose of the champion from Mexico, Jorge Vaca. to get this over fast. Letting the punches go, bad hands or no bad hands, as he said he would. So this uh, WBC World Away Championship fight, which is sponsored by Continental Airlines, has opened in sensational fashion. Hunting a wide open, taking punches to the head. for the first time in his life has big money and he's determined not to let this title go if he can help it and Mr. Cortez the referee has to break him up at the bell Hunnigan already breathing hard he's put a lot of work into the first two rounds he's slung a lot of punches Hunnigan's 33rd professional fight tonight. Just that one defeat on his record, the one last time against Vaca. Here's a sample of Hunnigan's work in the second round. Remember, his right hand is uh, in no shape, really. He gets a twinge, he says, every time. He throws it, but he threw it well enough there, and he rocked Vaca's head with it. From our overhead camera, dramatic view, another right from Hunnigan there. Fierce exchanges all through these first two rounds. And look how close the heads are coming. Hunnigan smeared in Greece. next month. Hannigan's fifth world championship fight in the past 18 months. Sixth world championship fight. Well, from Hunnigan. <laughs> Furious exchanges. <laughs> the jolting left hand shot out of back. These two testing each other to the full. appreciation of him. And again, Hunnigan gets through with 
punches this backer's trapped on the ropes. And Exeter is going to have to fight his way off. Cunningham just throwing everything in. Quite extraordinary. If ever you've seen a man determined to get his title back, this is it. Cunningham trying to find one swinging punch with which to drop his man, and he can't quite do it. Black has been trapped on these ropes now for nearly a minute. He's got him! He's got him over! He had to go! Remorseless attack! And Huntington got him in round three, and he's not going to beat the count. He's hurt! He's hurt! And he's out! Round three! And Huntington has collapsed in absolute exaltation. He's the champion again, and they're having to lift him off the floor. I think he's fainted with sheer excitement. He can't believe it. Have you ever seen such scenes? Huntington is champion again and he's jumping on the ropes above me here. He's gone delirious with joy. He said he'd do it, and do it he has with one swarming, remorseless attack under which the Mexican had to go. And Huntington's hat that he's donned says no mercy, and no mercy he showed to back up. celebration of success never mind that in trouble never mind the problems last time Hannigan is back and Hannigan is champion of the world again That is one of the most dramatic pictures we've seen in a British ring for a long time. He set up that vicious, non-stop, two-fisted attack with backup backed up against the ropes. And he wasn't going to let him go until Backer dropped at last and couldn't get up. I'm back. On the round. Lloyd, congratulations. Well, that was a different Lloyd tonight from the one in October, right? Yes, sorry. Um, in October, I had so much problem, you know. I had hand problem. I have love problem. I had also a problem, Harry, you know. And things wasn't going right for me in the gym. I was, you know, to be honest, when I came up from America, I was really mentally tired, you know, because um, I wasn't trained properly in the gym out there. Not because, you know, one, I tried, but I couldn't get it together because my hand was giving me a problem. So I was really disillusioned with it out there and I was having a guy at Bobby and you know the story between Bobby, I'm always sacking him and, and all sorts of things and because everything was going wrong for me out there. So I decided to have a break in Jamaica and I was out there in the sun and it was relaxing because in, over England, most everyone know me wherever I go and the media and everything was getting to me a bit. So I went out there and people didn't really pay me much attention although they know who I am so I can go relax myself. And I was doing running and training out there, Harry, and this time I had no love problem, and this time everything was okay. The only person who had problems tonight was Vaca, right? Yeah, you know, because you know, I, I, for the first couple of rounds, Harry, I decided to say, be smart, Lloyd, you know, push him back a bit, um, see how it goes, move, move away, see what he had. Then I realized he was throwing some punches, and there wasn't, there, there, was, there was coming there, but there was no power, and I realized I could take his shot, I was stronger than him. So I decided to say, hey, let me push him on the ropes and see what he can do. Because last time he had me on the ropes and he was punching away. I was inviting the punch and he couldn't do nothing. So this time I decided to change around the way, change it around, put him on the rope and work away. So I was working to Orthodox, then to Southport. He could have figured me out. So I was hit him and hit him to the head, hit him to the head. Then all of a sudden I changed it to the body and because he, he had his hand like this, I hit him straight into the solar plex with one right hand, lift up, right uppercut. And that was it. You cut his eye in the first round. That must have given you encouragement. It gave me encouragement, Harry, but it's also dangerous because he knows he's cut and he knows he's going to go all out to get me because, hey, I'm cut. 
He's probably my eye that last time, so he's going to be more determined. He's not going to put him off because he knows uh, to go 12 rounds with a cut eye is dangerous. He's going to try and knock me out or whatever. Now let's show the closing moments again because you tracked him on the ropes for about a minute here, didn't you? Yeah. You poured everything in. Yeah, I poured everything in, Harry. I realised, look, his friend's punches was missing. I just started to stick to him, go, open it up, bob and weave, like I've been practising in the gym. All the punches he was doing, you see. I was coming back with right hook, left hook, working on the ropes, keeping pin, keeping pin, keep throwing the punches, and right to the head. And then I'm going to come back down to the body, not just keep working him to the head because he's going to get used to that. And I said, so bring his hand up to the head, and to the right, the right, right to the body, and that was it. We've been practising these, these things in the punches. Those right hands, you were know? they hurting you? Well, slightly, Harry, slightly, but I just had to put um, all my energy and my force into it because uh, this fight was, was for me, you know, all my other fights was for my kids, my family, my loved ones, and I decided, hey, this one is for me because Vaka didn't beat me, and some of Vaka can come in the ring and claim that he beat me. I might as well retire, retire, Harry, because, you know, I can't let someone, I can't let someone like um, Vaka beat me because, I mean, I'm a better fighter. He's a good fighter, but I'm a better fighter. It was a wonderful way to get the title back, and, and your excitement at the end, I mean, you went delirious. Yes, Harry, because, um, this one was to me, you know, all the other, all the other fights were with other people, and this one was to me, and the way I lost the fight, a lot of pressure was on me, you know? A lot of pressure was on me, because if I had lose, I mean, that would have been the end of me, I would have packed it in, the press would have killed me tomorrow, and I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't let Fleet Street have this way with me, so... As it is, they're gonna love you. Uh, well, they, 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 you know, sometimes they, um, they write some unfair things about me, but I love them still. You know, they see me and they talk to me and I say hi to, to them. And tomorrow they're going to write something about me. But I hope after tonight they realise, you know, I might have children. It's not long going to have children, so don't, don't crucify me for that. Um, <laughs> judge me as a fighter, because that's what I am. I'm a fighter. You proved that tonight. Terrific performance. Thank you very much, Harry. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. So Lloyd Hannigan back where he belongs, WBC welterweight champion of the world. And the crowd that cheered him to the echo now wants to shake him by the hand, something that he's keen to avoid. The champion's belt, that's back in his possession. All that contrasting with the rather dejected figure of Vaca. Wembley had been a much happier place for him five months ago. And Hannigan was to give a fairly weighty clue as to what had so dr drastically affected his form last October. To all boxers, don't fall in love because you can lose points. <laughs> you, know you know he ran that with the Wilkinson Crusade thing. It happened to me last time. <laughs> Today it was still batteries of photographers as Hannigan attended a press conference at a London casino and the talk there was of a unification fight with Mark Breland for the WBA and WBC <laughs> titles, assuming that Breland beats Marlon Starling next month. The purse would be around $3 million. The smile stays on the face of Mickey Duff.